more or less 30% of all jobs in the EU rely on IPR intensive industries. The benefit of IPR is not just an economic theory. For innovative companies, intangible assets have become extremely important, especially for SMEs, but also for research centers and universities. Patents often open doors for capital and business partners. In order to remain competitive in the global economy, Europe needs to encourage even further the development of use of new technology and innovation. IPAR intense industries contribute roughly 40% of the total GDP in the EU, EU. And IPR intensive industries also pay significantly higher wages than other industries with a wage premium of more than 40%. This is consistent with the fact that the value added per worker is higher in IPR intensive industries than elsewhere in the economy. You see the importance of IPR protection and if we take a look at the figures of the counterfeiting market, there's a strong need for action. The global volume of the trade in fake goods stands for over 200 billion a year. This is comparable with the same market of illegal drugs, for instance. High-end products stands for more than 60% of the total value of detained goods. To demonstrate the importance of getting the policies environment right, an economic institute called Frontier Economics developed a scenario model to assess and measure the impact of the sector if circumstances will change. The largest impact relate to further increases in IP infringements. So let us take a look to this scenario model. What does it mean? A further increase in IP infringements between 5 and 50 percent, either online or offline, could result in an output loss of 25 to 75 billion. This level of output loss would be associated with a loss of between 60 and 170,000 direct jobs from the sector and tax losses between 8 and 26 billion. This is really huge. And let us take a look at the counterfeit production by country. China is by far the biggest country source for fake products detained in the Europe. That is not really new. But it's not the problem coming from China or other countries. The European Commission and national administrations are investigating the scale of fake products activity in the European Union. But it's not the production of fakes, what is really worrying. More important of this is consumers' mindset. And if you see 34% of all customers have already bought counterfeits, but more of 90% see no problem in it. So it is very dangerous development um, for younger consumers in particular, without having a bad conscience. And the younger generation is very much linked to the digital world, so this is very challenging. And what does it mean for the high-end industries in the digital age? On one hand, you got a huge opportunities, on the other hand, strong risks. And Emotional products with an emotional involvement need to have a certain kind of access. And how can essential elements 
of quality being transferred digitally and how can designers make the digital world more, let's call it, palpable, feelable. It's a very democratic channel, no barriers, but on the same time, open it for fakes. We need to have a clear rules on and offline at the same time. Fakes can undermine the trust in the internet shopping. The internet has opened up fast trading possibilities and allows consumers to have a wider choice of products. But growing markets attract cheats. For some people, the internet is a new outlet for supply of fakes. When shopping offline, consumer choice is heavily influenced by brands and reputation. So, the value gap between online intermediaries and creators risk the future development of a healthy digital market. And IPR is the legal mainstay of the culture and creative industries and only the protection can ensure sustainability of this sector.